Imagine not being subscribed to Christ in 2021. Today we're going to be talking about what is, in my opinion, the most underrated server on Bedrock. Now, the word underrated might not be used when talking about a featured server, but I'm gonna do it anyways. It's Galaxite, in my opinion. And well, you might ask, well, why is Galaxite underrated? It's a pretty bad server, only what, like 1,000 players play on it. What makes it so underrated? And sure, that's valid. Along with Mineville, it's the only server that has under 1,000 players at some point. But I still think it is a very good server, and I think some of the game modes are very, very fun. And that's what I want to talk about today. Just my opinion on Galaxite, why I think it's underrated, and why I think more and more people should start playing on it. So I started playing on Galaxite about a week ago, when I was filming footage for a... Um, server review video, which is gonna be very long, um, and I just tried to like play a bit so I could have an unbiased view of the server and just give a good review on it in that video. But but I actually found it very enticing. I had a lot of enjoyment playing on their game modes, and I found them very intriguing. I found them very unique and very creative, at least some of them. And while the KB may be pretty trash alongside Mineplexes and Cubecraft still has a very good gameplay experience since it's not all PvP based. And it might be hypocritical since out of all of its four game modes, two of them are PvP based. One being their, I think, Core Wars, and then I think Kronos. Core Wars being a sort of Bed Wars style, but with a very different twist. And the other one being a survival slash Fortnite styled game mode, but that's actually also very, very unique. Before I go into those game modes, I think it has to be considered how difficult it is for a game mode to make something creative. When it comes to making a very good and unique game mode, you really have to have a really good idea. You can't just go ahead and say, oh, okay, Hypixel has a good game mode, let's just copy that, which is what <laughs> which is what other games did. I'm not saying it's necessarily bad, because I do find enjoyment playing on other games, but it's way more difficult to come up with a unique game mode that can be enjoyable than to just copy a game mode or copy um, an existing fun game mode and just reuse some of the ideas. And I feel like Galaxide hasn't done any of that in those two game modes that I just mentioned. The other two game modes are basically just build packs and hide and seek. Hide and seek has nothing unique except that you can pick up power-ups that literally only help the hiders and not even the seekers. It's so one-sided and I really don't like the game mode at all. I mean, when you're a hider, it is fun, but when you're a seeker, it's just not fun. Build battle, or fill the gap as they call it, isn't actually build battle. It's more so a game mode where um, at the start of the game, it shows you a complete build and then you have to fill in the missing blocks at the build on your base. So every single team, I think, gets a random amount of holes or maybe not a random amount maybe they get the same amount of holes or blocks missing but they're on different places so it's not that like you can just copy somebody else and basically the team that has the highest percentage of blocks filled or holes filled i think it's a two-part game mode if there's a tie i think in the first round there's a second round i'm not sure i haven't played it enough but i found it actually quite interesting I'm not saying that's something revolutionary, but I, th I feel like it's something different, a different twist to build battle, and I quite like it. But I'm gonna leave those two game modes behind, and I want to focus on the two game modes being Kronos and their Bed Wars mode. Now, their Bed Wars mode, or aka Core Wars, is basically like any other Bed Wars copy, if you wanna call it that. Um, it just has like this generator that gives you iron, and you also have this item that allows you to respawn. If you lose that item, then you can't respawn. The item being a core. Now, the core has uh, the same thing going with, um, I think it's Cake Wars, where you have to tap it multiple times to kill it or to destroy it, and then the player can't respawn. Now, in my opinion, this has some drawbacks and also some benefits. I, for example, you just have to tap the treasure once in single player to break it. On Core Wars, you have to tap it, I think, 10 times to break it. Egg Wars is also the same, where it's an instant tap. And Lifeboat also has multiple lives for their beds. So Core Wars is more so on the extreme side of things, when it has, I think, when you need to, like, tap it 10 times with a sword for it to break. So I wouldn't say that's in any way what makes the game mode unique, but it does make it different. Now, I haven't played enough to actually see 
what difference it makes it definitely means that you can live for way longer like somebody can kill you they're killing the core you can respawn and you can still save it i don't know if you can like regenerate the core again i haven't played enough i haven't done enough research to know that but i i can tell you that it's it's really it, it really does benefit the defender if his core has um a large amount of health because again somebody can kill you you respawn and you can maybe somehow manage to make a comeback and save your core now one huge drawback and that is a drawback with a lot of game modes um such as treasure wars or also lifeboat sped wars and also cubecraft's egg wars where you respawn and you don't have any of your items that you had now war wars has this like weird i think bug or maybe it's a feature where you where sometimes somebody can kill you and you keep all your items but sometimes not i feel like that's a that's a glitch because when i played my items did respawn along with me but sometimes my inventory was cleared so don't know what what, what happens maybe if it's a void kill I keep my items, and if it's not, I don't. I, I don't know what the me mechanics are. Galaxy players could probably tell me how exactly that works, but but I feel like in this case where you normally can't respawn um, with your items, it's 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 very bad because obviously a player that plays a lot of Bed Wars and you can respawn with armor, it's such a benefit to respawn with armor where you can instantly fight the other person back. While as if you lose one PvP fight in Treasure Wars or even in Cubecraft's Egg Wars or now in Core Wars on Galaxy, you lose all your items and you just can't fight back. The person goes to your base, they maybe kill you once and they can get your respawnable item and then you just get finaled. And in Bed Wars, that's not the case because you respawn with armor so there's a chance for you to fight back and it's a bit more intense. While as in these Core Wars or Treasure Wars or any of the game modes where you don't respawn with any armor or any items, it's just so one-sided. The person that has the better gear gets to win. The reason why I said the person has better gear is because most of the time, uh, because of the bad PvP, you will lose to the person that has better armor or better gear. So in comparison to Bed Wars, it is pretty bad that you can't respawn with anything because in Bed Wars, again, you can fight back, you can make a comeback, you can still defend your bed, but in Kronos, it takes forever for your core to get destroyed and they can just, I guess, spawn kill you. I think one reason why the core has such a large amount of life is to give you time to buy items and maybe defend yourself. But I don't really find that practical because you have to run out, go to your generator, pick up your iron and then buy stuff in that time. The person attacking can just kill you all over again. If that was the idea behind giving the core more life, then they should have given the player longer spawn protection. That way they can actually benefit from having a core that has longer life. So I feel like that's a flawed game mechanic. Next up, I also want to talk about the generators. Now the generators are... I mean, they look absolutely amazing. When we think of generator, we think of iron popping out of the floor or gold popping out of the floor or maybe a block over our head that's like spawning stuff. But Core Wars really twisted that and made a robot that is just mining iron and then giving it to you. And I love that idea. I really do. I think it's a very good idea for generators and it's something original and something we haven't seen yet. Now something that does bug me is that the early gameplay of every single game is that you rush without a sword or armor and just with blocks, enough blocks to rush the next space and go break their core. Now um, this does equal the playing field because somebody that's defending can buy themselves an iron sword and win the fight. Now this does make fighting equal because on one hand you can decide do I want to defend and spend all my iron to buy a sword or do I want to rush and spend all my iron to buy blocks now normally this isn't very beneficiary for fast games or for sweats because unless the other player is just an absolute bot having a sword is way better than having a fist in my opinion now I'd wish for it to be more inclined towards rushers but then again games would be faster and then some people might spend less time on the server because a win takes less time so if they have like a goal of 50 wins a day it might take them maybe maybe um, two hours and instead of three hours if they had f longer games and obviously Galaxy wants you to spend more time on the server because for example if the players from the US are playing all day long and then the players from um, I don't know China come along then it's double the amount of players online but if the game modes were to be shorter and say everybody from the US region just leaves after half a day then the server cuts down to half, and when the Chinese players come on, then it, the server should gonna be like 500 members compared to the 1,000 members that they could have. So making players spend more time on the server is very beneficiary to having more concurrent players. 
Um, but I just feel like that's sort of scummy because you're basically forcing the player to spend more time on the server and you're benefiting from it while the other player is just like suffering because they are not happy with having slow games. Which is what I like about Bed Wars. You can get 100 wins a day in like 3 hours or 4 hours and it's just very easy to have fast games. That's why my 1 minute 21 second record is such a very good example of nether games and how they just really don't care about making you stay on the server for forever. They don't have a single game mode that like, besides maybe Skyblock or maybe even Factions, they don't have really have a game mode that forces you to stay on. I haven't played a lot of Factions, so um, don't quote me on that. But Skyblock is really a game mode where the longer you're on it, um, the more benefits you get, and the more stuff you get done. Well, it does feel a bit scummy from both Hive and Galaxy to do that, where defending and rushing both have benefits and drawbacks and are both equal. I do find that it still doesn't take away from the game mode, and it still is very fun. Galaxite also has a very limited item shop. Now, there's some positives and some drawbacks to that. Now, the positives are that on one hand, you can very easily explain your game mode, and there's no complicated procedure to play the game mode in a way that is satisfying or just fulfills your need of enjoyment. But if you have an item shop with way more items, it's going to be more confusing to a new player to find out what they have to buy and it just might not be fun the first time, but it also means that you can play the game mode for longer and always and you can always not know the full range of items to use in every single instance. For example, in Egg Wars, there's, I think, just clay and maybe a woodbed defense. I don't know. I haven't been playing Egg Wars recently, so I wouldn't know. But I know back in the day, you had a pickaxe and that was it. You didn't need anything else. You always had a over 90% chance that a pickaxe would do the job perfectly fine. While in Egg Wars, that's just not a security that you can have because everybody can get either wool, clay, or they can get wood. I'm not gonna count endstone in because endstone would um, be under the category of buying a pickaxe. I'm just gonna mention clay. So you're gonna have to decide, am I gonna buy a pickaxe or an axe? Or am I just not gonna buy any of those and hope they have wool which I can break with my sword very easily? That kind of decision making of what items you have to buy just won't exist if you play a game mode with very limited items because if there's very limited items, that means that those items also have very limited use. A pickaxe can serve to break um, end stone, clay, or obsidian. And you can also buy better pickaxes um, depending on the bed defense on and on whether or not they have a trap. So again, you can have a shop with very little items, which means that every single game can basically be the same and it can get very boring very fast, which is what happened on Cubecraft. Or you can have a very vast item shop with like 20 items or 30 items, which you can buy and that'll give you a different experience every single game because it's just not going to be the same. You're not going to be buying the same stuff. You're going to be doing different stuff every single game. While if you're playing Egg Wars, or in this case, Core Wars, you're going to be buying the same thing over and over and over again. And you don't need to buy anything else. So I think that's my one critique on the game mode, besides obviously the very bad KB. Now that we've talked about that game mode for a very long time now, I'm going to talk about Chrono. So now, when I mentioned Fortnite, um, I did actually mean it's basically like Fortnite, but don't click off because in my, my opinion, they did a really good job to make this better than Fortnite. So for obviously everybody that remembers the absolute disaster that was Fortnite, um, or I mean, it wasn't really a disaster, it was very well received, but I think everybody agrees that that's one of the worst games that has come out. Fortnite is basically just a game mode where you drop down from the sky onto a map and you have to find loot and you have to then go ahead and kill people and you only have one single life. Now, they did the same thing with, with Kronos. You basically drop down um, from the sky, you have your like little drop ship and you have to drop down on the map and you have a map in your hand and you also have to find loot and you also have to kill people. Wow, no surprise, it's basically Fortnite. But here comes the twist. It's all based around time. Yes, time. See, the thing about this game is that the person that has the most am amount of time left gets to win. Now, what I mean by that is that every single person has a counter at the top that I think gives you 12 minutes of time. Every time you die, you 
give a certain amount of time to a different player. That might be 30 seconds, it might be a minute, it might be more than a minute. And the more you die, the more time you lose faster. Now, the more time you don't kill somebody, you also run out of time over time. And if you don't kill people over time, you lose time um, just because time passes by. I'm saying time so much. Holy crap. If somebody kills a lot, then he will also gain a lot of time. But if somebody also gets on a 5 kill streak and then doesn't get a kill for the next like 10 minutes, he'll still lose. So he'll have to, he'll have to distribute those kills perfectly so that all the kills given the maximum amount of time that he can possibly get. You also have chests where you can get different amount of, amounts of loot. The loot can be anything between glass blocks, to ender pearls, to armor upgrades, to bow upgrades, to sword upgrades. The loot is very very narrow and very very limited and there's not really a lot of different loot you can get. But the reason why this game is so fun is because, um, again, you get to respawn. So if somebody kills you, you can basically payback them. The whole point of the game mode is to obviously get the most amount of kills or get the most amount of kills um, and distribute them correctly so that you have the most amount of time left. Now, this game mode is also a long game mode, which, again, uh, fits with my argument of Galaxy trying to make you play longer. But honestly, that, that's the same with every single, like, survival game styled game. Um, I think this one, again, is done very well, so I don't mind, like, spending, like, 10, 20 minutes finishing a game. One massive critique that I have is that the game benefits, um, long-time players more than it does, um, newcomers. So, there is basically a, a battle pass, um, or not a battle pass, I think it's a game pass or something, where you have to, um, play a lot to level up your kit. You can have a defense kit. You can have an, I think, offensive kit, and you can also have, I think, a neutral kit. I'm not sure what it is, but for the default kit, you get a bow, which I think is the offensive kit. Now, the more you play, the more you can level up that kit that will give you better bows and I think even more arrows. I'm not sure about the more arrows part, but it will definitely upgrade your bow. And I think that's a bit unfair because a higher level bow will also do more damage, which is unfair towards a different or a, a newer player. If you have played for like 100 days and you're, you, you have it maxed out compared to a new player, you could probably one shot him. So I find that a bit annoying and a bit unfair. Uh, because again, it benefits people just playing very long on the server. Bed Wars and both Hive just don't have that. They have cosmetics to show how long you've played, but nothing in-game that can give you an advantage. And I feel like they should change that. But then again, it is their server. Something else that the game would has is um, zones. So there is basically a border that closes in on you every now and then. And if you step beyond that border, that's going to slowly start to kill you. It's a very good design when whenever the border moves, everything that is in the border... Um, becomes into nether or feels like it's it, it's like death or something and that's a very good design for the border but a very big critique I have is that on a certain map what you can do is you can basically be underground and above ground at the same time when the border shrinks in too much this doesn't mean that the person with the most time will win this means that the person with the best armor will win and it's very annoying because when I was playing um, there was this underground like village where you could like get stuff and I was above ground and the zone was already way too small for me to go back underground without me dying and I was just okay how am I gonna win I got outgeared. I lost, I think. I think the other player had like, I think two hearts or something. So um, that was very annoying where I just died to the zone because somebody else has better armor. And I feel like that shouldn't be the case. I feel like the person who had more time should have won being me. I think I had a whole two minutes over the other person. But that was just annoying because he was underground. I was above ground. He had better armor because there was a village with a ton of upgrades in that village. And I feel like they should change that where if... Um, the border closes in too much and it sees that there's a person underground and another person above ground It should TP them to like a death match I think that's a really good um, decision that Hive made is that after a certain amount of time We're just gonna put players into a death match instead of just I don't know making the border kill them all um, Hive's survival game border doesn't move but if it would move um, that would be very annoying for um um, players to have to die to the border so again the border doesn't move but then again they still have the death match it does stop campers from just camping all game and i think that's pretty good galaxy just doesn't have that like it has a moving border and then it just doesn't put you in death match i feel like it, it's just very unfair having a moving border does stop people from camping all game and it does stop people from um just not getting loot at all 
and just hiding somewhere. But it does benefit the player that has better gear, so um, if you die to the zone, the person with more time just doesn't win. So I just, I, I just, I just find that really annoying. Now that I've covered the game modes, I feel like it's unfair to not cover um, their battle pass that's in the lobby. Um, apparently, you can't use your skin on the server. I'm not sure if that's true or not, because I can see my own skin. I can see that some other people using um, um, their skin. But for some reason, some people just can't use their skin, and they get this like default battle pass skin, which I find very ugly. And apparently the only way you can get a custom skin is obviously by either having a custom skin or if you get a battle pass high enough for you for you to actually use a custom skin. And I just find that's just like really wrong because have it like, like half the fun of Minecraft is um, having a skin that you enjoy people looking at or that you feel cool using. And just not having that, it just it just feels like something is missing in your playing experience. Again, I can see my own skin, but I don't know if other people can, or if they instead will see like this default skin that's very very ugly. So I guess that's one harsh critique for a Galaxy. Um, I do like their lobby. I do like their overall design. I feel like they have a very very good design team, probably like one of the best on on Bedrock. I can see why people don't play the server because of the skin thing, but overall. I can see why people wouldn't play the server because of the skin thing, but if they would remove that, I feel like more and more players should play on the server. Because the game modes really are very fun, and I do play them from time to time when uh, Metal Games' servers are down or Bedwars isn't working. But yeah, that was my video on um, the Galaxide server, which in my opinion is the most underrated server on Beta currently. Um, this could have been, like, I, th this was a pretty close call between Mineplex and Galaxite, because Mineplex has had a recent resurgence in players, and their game modes have changed a lot, but I feel like their game modes just aren't that original anymore, and I really do like Galaxite's Kronos game mode, I think it's very original, it's very well made. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed as well, this was, again, a longer video, but you guys really seem to love these, so, um, if you did, then do subscribe, and do like the video, and comment, um, potato. <laughs> let's, let's, let's go comment potatoes, guys, you guys need potatoes, comment potato, and you will be a very cool potato, and you will get potatoes. Alright, but that was it, again, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Actually, no, not tomorrow. Tomorrow's Sunday. I'm not posting Sunday. So, Monday it is. See you then. Goodbye.